All right, one more League with Elves. I'm going to the Nerd Rage Gaming Tournament uh, tomorrow in Iowa. Uh, it's been a hot second since I've played uh, Paper Modern Tournament, but uh, this is kind of my go-to, smarky, consistent deck. So uh, hopefully we'll run some people down this morning and then run them down again tomorrow in, uh, in person. I have, a, I have a physical Magic the Gathering deck, physical physical Modern deck right here, right here in my hands. Um, I'm going to keep this because if we hit a land on the draw, we're on the draw. I don't think I'd keep this on the play, but we're on the draw, and if I hit... Um, if I hit a land, this is like actually our nut draw. So we got two two draw steps to hit a land. Like again, when you talk about um, when you talk about like speculative hands like this, it's basically the risk to reward. So like a hand like this, the upside of hitting is huge because the payoff is this is like one of my best draws possible. I have, I have elves. I have tiny tiny green people. Got damping spheres and leave the stampedes and all sorts of all sorts of stuff. My set on the 75 for door. I'm not sure if I want to play revokers or if I want to play damping sphere. And an extra damping sphere and an extra Rex Sage. Hmm. If they have a path to exile here, we might be in we might get in a little bit of trouble. Looks like they're playing spirits. <clears throat> no path is good for us. And then uh, next turn we just get to kind of go batty. Spirits, spirits. All the all of the other tribal decks tend to be good matchups for elves because um, our deck just linears harder than all of than all of their decks. And their their decks don't tend to like interact super meaningfully with what we have going on. Deal. Path was a good draw. Uh, leads okay here. Notably, because they cast the path there, they don't have uh, Spellcrawler up this turn, though, so that's nice. What's the white for? It isn't. This is a this is a mono green land that hurts us that can also be cycled to draw a card. So this deck's overall land count is low. There's only 18 lands in it, but we have a ton of creatures that make mana. So our deck has a lot of mana sources in it. So a lot of the times decks that don't play white cards in modern will play this card, Horizon Canopy, because you can pay one and sacrifice it. So it's basically a land that lets you turn it into something else when you no longer need a land. If they have a collecting company, this might prompt it. <clears throat> All right. So I think I lead on lead the stampede here. Because if I find an Azuri, I can potentially kill them this turn. So this uh, looks at the top five cards in my deck, and I can reveal any number of creatures among them. Hey, look. It's an Azuri. This is, uh, this is my turn four. Oh, do they have a... They have a Spellcrawler and they're just like holding it. Our collecting company. Hey, Pikes. Thanks for the entire year of support. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Ah, Creature Instant Collecting Company. It really makes me wonder like what possibly happened to make that bug be a thing that can happen. <laughs> makes you wonder... Did you find a Coco or a Deputy of Detention or a Spellcrawler, or a Deputy of Detention, or a Reflector Mage? Yeah, this has been up for at least a week or so now. I screenshotted it and posted it in Discord to laugh about it a little bit ago. Going to concedes. Yep. It's good. Good clean turn four kill. Um, it's the matchup where Scavenging Ooze isn't particularly good because our creatures aren't really trading in combat and dying. And then uh, I think Lead the Stampede just tends to be a little bit worse than Dismem Dismember. Being able to uh, unlock our creatures, our cards when they get spell colored is like really reasonable. 
The Spirits deck also tends to have like Deputy Detention post board a lot of the time now, so that makes this card valuable there as well. For people that are seeing this deck for the first time, uh, not only is this deck really uh, consistent and powerful in my experience, but the sideboarding is just like super clean with it. We have like these two lead the stampedes and two scavenging uses in the main deck, and most of your sideboarding is when these cards aren't good, swap them for cards that are. Um, I see a need would like like a land on the draw, but it's like also okay if we just like draw more creatures that make mana. So usually, usually like. Turn one, land, uh, mana dork is like keepable most of the time. Love, love to stick turn two, Elvish Arc Druid. If that's not possible, uh, Dwinnin's Elite, maybe. Have I tried main deck Dismember? So I thought about putting Dismember in the main deck over like uh, Scavenging Ooze, potentially, for instance. Um, but. After thinking about it a lot, I think of most of the matchups where you want Dismember are like already good matchups game one. And I think Scavenging Ooze hedges the matchups that are a little bit harder while just being generically fine. If that, uh, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go ahead and Dismember this. Might be, might be a little slow here on the draw. Their start is a little bit aggressive and I did miss my second land here. Yeah, like, Thing in the Ice is, like, explicitly the one card that you would like to dismember that's hard game one, but <clears throat> I think that's a little bit too narrow. Like, I think Phoenix is on the down, is probably on the down tick right now. Like, people g went through their cycle and, like, realized it's not the end-all be-all. <clears throat> uh, there's a deck list on your screen, as always, Scissor. The, the TLDR is that, uh... Basically, I've been playing the same main deck for, like, almost a year now. More than a year? Probably more than a year, honestly. Scavenging, scavenging uses and lead the stampedes are in the main. Two, two, and two. And there's leads three, four, and scavenging uses three in the sideboard. Yeah. Yeah, and basically, like, if you expected, like, like, if you were showing up to, like, a local tournament where, like, you knew a quarter of the room was playing Phoenix, like, main deck dismember is fine. In fact, if I knew I was showing up to a tournament where, like, a quarter of the room was playing Phoenix, I'd probably, like, main two skews to dismember and, like, board all the leads. Hey, Luca. It's been a hot second. Hope life's treating you well. Yeah, I tried for D Sphere No Revoker last time. That's the one thing I'm not sure on. I've got two revokers in the box sitting next to me, but I am not 100% uh, uh, certain that that is a uh, decision that I I want to make for the weekend. Revoker's still like pretty good. Like revoker's like also decent against Tron. Yeah, priorities. I often say people don't uh, quit magic. They just take breaks. So life life will happen. And magic, magic will still be here later when things settle. <clears throat> so we've kind of blown our load here at this point. So we're really hoping for like a collected company or a copy of Lead the Stampede or like one of our big payoffs. No, the switch is just because I don't I don't know that I I don't know that I expect um I don't know that I expect uh I expect Frexy Revoker to be great. Like the big part of the reason I played Revoker for a long time was because it shut off KCI. But like that's not a deck anymore. So I'm just like trying other things in those slots to see how they feel basically. So on turn three, we're attacking for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's not bad. We have an eighth power in play as well. Morning Freak. Like I said, this matchup uh, is decent, but not, not unlosable by any means. There's some play to it. Like last game, they had the deputy when we stumbled, and here we might not have a payoff. 
Yeah, that's one of that's one of the things that gives Revoker a nod. And like Revoker's like not just dead against things like Tron, and it's like decent against things like Blue White Control because it like turns off their Planeswalkers. Comes up, comes in in other random spots where people have activated abilities too. Uh, sure, maybe I don't remember exactly what that deck plays, Le Luke. That's like mostly irrelevant. All right, so they're going to take six here, down to 13. And the problem here is I have a bunch of 1-1s, one so, like, if they have any, like, meaningful-sized things here, I'm going to be pretty far behind pretty quickly. Like, if they have a Deputy Detention, they're going to, like, gobble up two of my Elvish Mystics and leave me with not much of a board. I mean, 2-2s two actually aren't really that big of an issue when you have Pendlehaven and Playpike. Like, if they have, uh, if they have like, a 3 and a 2 here, I'm probably going to concede. Just, like, drew another land and we're dead. Sometimes, uh, sometimes your 18 land deck draws 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them in, uh, 10 cards. Doesn't look like they have a lord as well, so that's nice. Save this. Yeah, yeah, it's just how it goes, Danon. We didn't get completely blown out there, so we play on. And part of me wonders, like, because these matchups go kind of fair, maybe maybe I'm supposed to, like, leave two lead the Stampedes in. Maybe maybe two Dismembers is too many. All right, that's a Collected Company, so I guess we're just going to pass here. Because they're, they're representing... Actually, do I attack and then Coco and they Coco? How do we like that? I think I like that. I think I like that. If they have a second spell queller off of this in addition to the collected company, I get into a little bit of trouble, but like if I hit like Dwinin's Elite plus Shaman of the pack here, we could just kill them with the company. Okay. Okay. like a path to exile here and they're gonna like path the one I'm targeting they have another spell call I'm gonna be real sad here god they had a company and they were waiting brutal Queller and Deputy. Sure. Brutal. I get to kill their Lord here. So like, if if I draw a Dismember, I get to come get my company back. So maybe, but probably dead here. Hey, XM, thanks for the third of the year. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Another spell? It was just all gas.
Uh, am I dead in the air? Three, four, five, six. Nope, not dead in the air. And then uh, <clears throat> this actually, this actually means they have pretty, why did I pay five? Why did I, I, I was thinking I had his ability in my head. It probably doesn't matter. Uh, Elvish, Elvish Mystic. It is uh, Lane War Elves with a different name. All right, draw brick. Draw brick. Draw brick. All right, let's redraw the sweat. Oh, the card like Deputy has a card, Spell Queller. So this card exiles spells off the stack, similar to how Deputy takes them out of play. Okay. All right, so the ideal here is they have to leave enough back that they can't kill me in two. It's similar to Frilled Mystic. It's like if Frilled Mystic was temp templated like Deputy of Detention. So like when I kill this, I get the Collected Company back. All right. Well, I mean, like, that was my best draw, right? So... So if I hit a uh, double shaman here, they die. Oh, I guess I should have paid black, huh? Yeah, I should have paid black because then I'd be at eight and then these wouldn't be lethal after they sacrifice one. Yeah, so if I if I pay black there, I guess I guess if I pay black, they don't have to sacrifice though. Yeah, if I pay if I pay black, they don't have to sacrifice because then I can't activate Azuri's ability. So then they're obligated to block. Oh. Oh, did I punt twice? No, that doesn't matter. So I can attack with both of these because this is a free block regardless. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to take six in the backswing. That's a close game. That's a close game. That's a close game considering, like, I drew, like, very poorly and, like, they hit well, right? Like, when we, fi when we finally drew a spell, they had. We, had. we had good rips on both sides and outs there at the end. Yeah, I mean, Pendlehaven, so I was thinking about does the Pendlehaven matter, but the Pendlehaven doesn't matter either because the Spell Queller, the Spell Queller has a free block. So, like, even if I Pendlehaven on the token before and they're both 3-3s, three the Spell Queller blocks one and then the Deputy of Detention blocks one and it just doesn't matter. Yeah, Pike, someone else did bump the party bus. This is a close set. A little bit unfortunate in the last two. It's just how magic works sometimes. I do you think I do think after playing that, I kind of want a second lead the stampede in that matchup post board. I mean, like the problem wasn't the the butt on deputy. The problem was the butt on the the spell queller. 
Like, because the Spell Queller could block for free, in order to survive that combat step, I had to be able to force them into blocks that required them to throw away one of their flying creatures so I wasn't done on the backswing. And there wasn't, there wasn't a combination of plays that forced that to happen. Hey Pike, um, if they if they go back to Eldritch Moon in um, if they go back to Eldritch Moon in uh, this new format, Spell Queller with Little Tefri is gonna be so gross. And that that sounds fun. That's probably not like modern playable because it's like two three mana cards, but like in a slightly slower bigger card pool format, that would that would definitely be a thing. We just play we could play we just play spell color and bampo, right? You basically get to play eight eight frilled mystics, like one of them costs three mana. Yeah, spell spell color and mystic alone just like seems gross, but then like you could just make it so your spell colors don't give them their spells back. Yeah, shaman. Shaman just gives this deck a lot of reach and just gets 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 you out of situations that you're otherwise never winning from. It's like you're get out of jail free card a lot of the time. It's very very powerful. There's a lot of situations where it's like, well, we're just dead here unless we do the thing and we hit the other thing, and they're like, oh, oh kill you. Basic forest. Search for all right. A race. A race against the sweeper. Yeah, so when I was Andrew, like, like if you're someone who has a hard time keeping one landers, it's definitely like not the deck for you. This hand keep this deck keeps a lot of one landers. So our opponent suspended a search for tomorrow. Uh, if they have an anger or a sweltering sun here and their opener, we're just dead. But if they don't, we'll be in a pretty good spot to race them. So, set up for good, clean, turn four lethal here. Missed, missed our second land drop on two, hit it on three, set up for turn four lethal. So, uh, do we have lethal through a lightning bolt? If they lightning bolt us, I have three, four, I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm one short if they have a lightning bolt. And again, this is a lot about how modern it is. You're just like, all right, are you dead? Or do you have, do you have the thing? One of those, one of those two things is likely. Either you are dead or you have the thing. Oh, I did not count Taven actually. So if they bolt this, I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Good catch. The pendle the pendle even is so good. Yeah, the someone had submitted a viewer deck list of elves, and they just like had a bunch of extra forests over the pendle haven and the horizon canopy, and I was just like, this is so much worse. The, the pendle haven just randomly wins you so many games. It's just like, all right, what if my what if my land randomly pumped my dorks? My opponent cast uh, two spells and died. Uh, the modern story. So, um, my opponent's deck is uh, a, a land-based combo deck that tends to board into cards that uh, will kill all my creatures, like deal three damage to all the creatures in play. So, basically, how our creature-heavy deck plays through those is we have more copies of this card. Lead the Stampede, which draws us lots of creatures. So, rather than try and play... I've seen other people try and play cards that, like, give your creatures indestructible or, like, discard spells. And rather than play these kind of cards that are, like, the timing on them is super specific, I, mu I found after a lot of playing lots of different configurations that I much rather just prefer to play a bunch of Lead the Stampede. So that way, when my opponent doesn't have their Sweeper, my Lead the Stampede is drawing me more gas. And when they do have their Sweeper, it lets me refill after they've cleared my board. And, like, obviously, you don't always beat a sweeper, but there's definitely games where you can. 
In fact, it's funny. I played this deck at a paper tournament in November, I think it was. <clears throat> and I had a turn where against Titan Shift where my opponent cleared my board on their turn three when they were on the play. And then I like killed them on my turn four. I'm just like, yep, let's get it. Thought two spells and dives the Jeff Hogan story. That's only when we're playing twenty six lands. If you'll notice, the the one of the first match we lost today was because we flooded in our eighteen land deck, and we'll soon we'll soon be back to standard. We'll be registering twenty six lands and never hitting. Seems pretty good. Mana Dork into Elvish Shark Druids, like all you can really ask for in life. A simple, simple, simple Elven man. I just want to cast land war elves and then follow it up with Elvish Shark Druid. Get some some good top end here too. And like the sand is set up too, where like if they if they sweep me on three, they're like, alright, they sweep me on three, my turn three is just like lead the stampede, draw some more cards, like we'll get set up on four. So like they have to like sweep me on three and have like a turn four or five kill to like put the sand down. Thanks, haste. No turn one search, their deck must be broken. Right? Yeah, right, you'd think you'd think this archetype plays twelve searches, like I play twelve land war elves. The, with, like, the frequency at which it has it. <clears throat> wow, do you really not have a way to kill my Arctrid? Uh, this deck would play Glimpse of Nature. Just, you'd probably cut the two lead the Stampedes and the two... The two lead the Stampedes and the two Screws and play four Glimpse. Um, what's going on, Calandras? The notification window and when you actually resub are, like, really far off since the, the most recent Twitch update. Yeah, Glimpse, Glimpse is banned in Modern. All right, so what I want to do here, the question is, do, like, how, how badly do I want to play around a Sweeper? I feel like I can afford to play around a Sweeper a little bit here. And actually, like, the degree to which we're playing around a sweeper probably still involves just, like, playing elves, right? Like, I think I... I think we play around a sweeper by just, like, going Dwinnin's Elite into Elvish Mystic into Attack for Two Pass. Yeah, and then the way... The way not playing Collected Company right away plays around a sweeper is next turn, if my opponent goes to sweep my board, I can float mana with Elvish Arc Druid in response, and then after the sweeper resolves, cast Collected Company with the floating mana so that way i like still have things in play after they try and sweep my board and like my board's like pretty menacing here and the way my opponent started off this game is like not particularly good so like they're pretty unlikely to kill me on their turn four the opponent's done a lot of nothing this match Collected Company is basically a Hearthstone card in Magic. This is like, this is like, uh, what's the what's the Hearthstone card that pulls two random two drops out of your deck and puts them into play? This is the Magic version of that. Well, I mean, usually they they keep hands that have ramp spells. Called Arms, yeah, yeah. This is the Magic version of Called Arms. Just like two two real clean turn four kills, two games in a row. No, 
I, I don't think companies should have been a sorcery. I think companies fine, isn't it, Steve? I think there's, if there's anything to complain about on the collecting company card, it's that's just, like, the variants that it introduced. Just, like, definitely, like, some Hearthstone-level RNG. Turn 8 kill, yep, 4 plus 4. This deck, so, again, the best way... The best way to describe this deck is... It's not the fastest deck in Modern, but it's just the most consistent. So, like, and what I mean by that is, while the absolute blistering fastest this deck can kill is turn three, the number of hands that you draw up that just, like, end the game by four, I think are, the average number of those is higher on average than basically any other deck in the format. Burn, burn might be close. I bet, I bet this is contention with burn. Would this deck run Green Sun and two Arbors if it were legal? Yeah, almost certainly. You'd probably go to nineteen lands and like cut, uh, like Elves of Deep Shadow. Green Sun, Green Sun, you would play ten out, ten out of ten. I would, I would love, I would love eight Shamans of the pack. If you told me I could play four more Shamans of the pack that cost one more mana, just like yep, in sign, sign me up. Actually, might cut lead the Stampede. I could be, could be it, could be, could be lead the Stampede's the one you want to get rid of. No, that's only Legacy like Elves that can kill turn two. This deck has some um, silly turn three draws off of Heritage Druid and then Company and Shaman of the pack, but no turn, no turn twos. Yeah, Chalky. So basically, the reason why Green Sun Dryad Arbor is good is because, think about it as, you get to put four Land War Elves in your deck that on turn six are not Land War Elves. So you basically, it's just a modal card. So turn one, Land War Elves is the best card in your deck on turn one, right? So you have four cards that are the best card in your deck on turn one that are also still the best card in, a, the, a different best card in your deck turn six. You, you've been playing standard, right? You know how sad it is to draw land war elves after turn one? Morning, slam in. Our matchmaking keeps failing, chat. I am going to be taking the entirety of this weekend off. <clears throat> so, I did... Did the last couple of weekends. I'm taking this weekend off since I'm playing in the tournament on Saturday. And then Sunday I'm going to hang out with with the fam. And uh, get some paperwork stuff done. I'll be back on on Mondays for my normal schedule. That's true. That's true. Arcbo, Arcbo helps. Arcbo, Arcbo is a heck of a drug. If you're looking for some modern content to watch tomorrow, be sure to tune in, tune in to twitch.tv forward slash energy series. Flying? It's like three hours, Danon. Listen, here in the Midwest, anything less than six hours, you don't even blink at driving, okay? In fact, most of the time, Matt and I wouldn't fly until it was past it. It was like eight or more. The person who sent me this elf deck, they sent me really beautiful tokens for my for my elf warriors. It was lovely. But I'm gonna give a free plug to the artist. I don't know. I don't know who this is. There might be other scary things on their website, but these are uh, Angelarium tokens. But they're they're nice. Where are all the timeouts at? What's going on, Carmenova? Welcome back. Twelve. Yeah, there, there's one that's got like there's one that's got like a like these ones have like a regular moon, and then there's one that's got like a blood moon behind it. I don't know. Now, nah, people, people on the West Coast, 
East Coast people tend to drive for Magic events too. But people, people on the West Coast, don't, from my understanding, don't really like to drive to Magic tournaments. That's why events are never successful out there. That's why That's why there's never been... That's why the STG Open Series stopped going out there and why there was never a competitor that popped up. Like if you look at if you look at the attendance of all of the tournaments that like happen out there, did I did I not like my DX racer? It was worse than my more expensive office chair. So like before I got the sponsored racer, like this chair that I'm sitting in here is like a six hundred dollar office chair, which for price for price point comparison costs twice as much as the racer. So it's a little bit more ergonomic. I don't think... I think if I didn't already have this chair, I probably would have not. Like, the racer was fine. I just, like, already had this chair and I liked it a little bit more. Yeah, Denver... Salt, Salt Lake City... Is Utah considered the West Coast? I'm not, I'm not super familiar with my geography in those areas, but I'm not certain if that's considered the West Coast or not. Um, I think I'm probably supposed to company now because I could hit a Heritage Druid. So you want to stack these so the Shaman Trigger goes on the stack first so it resolves last. So that way the Dwinnin's Elite Token gets made and gets counted. It's west. It is west-ish. You're right. It's, it's west of the Midwest. I don't know. I don't know. It's not the coast though, right? Like I know there's a ton of like really wide open space in the west. But I wouldn't. That's not the west coast, right? Humans, humans tends to be a good matchup for this deck, which is uh, which is one of the many reasons to play it. Like I said, all of the all of the other tribal decks, humans, spirits, merfolk, like those, those all tend to be good matchups for this archetype. So. The problem with a card like Neoform in Standard is that you you got to remember with Neoform you're basically investing you're basically investing two cards, right? And because you're investing two cards, whatever you're getting has to be worth two cards, and there really aren't creatures with the power level to be worth throwing an extra creature away essentially. So I believe they're dead next turn. I'm going to cast this and then attack for a bunch. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And then I only have to hit them with 1, 2, 2, and they're dead. Just like Shaman of the Pack still 18 damage this game. Nice. Noise. Noise. This is pretty slow. We didn't kill them until turn 5. Come at me, bro. Come at me. You got a fireball with your name on it. Go to 11. Gas fireball, target you. Do you do? Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people who think playing white cards in this deck is the correct thing to do. I think they're silly. I got you, Seagull. Good morning. Yeah, yeah, it's mono green. The fact that we have black sources that like help cast dismember is like nice, but like not necessary. Wirewood symbiote. Uh, this game's like not amazing, but it's like definitely in the range of keepable. What flavor is that? I usually drink unsweetened, but this is actually raspberry. 
They didn't. Uh, they didn't have unsweetened at the store last time I picked them up. And raspberries like my second choice. Oh, although my hand my hand wasn't super strong, but it's definitely strong enough to beat that. That's a start we can beat. I assume they board Thalia out against us a lot of the time, but if we get Thalia, it's going to be a little annoying. This is 10 out of 10 naming collected company. God damn it. <laughs> what a beating. <laughs> This member. All right, manual mode, let's go. Down to 12. Uh, that, that makes these almost lethal, right? Company, company's just always the name there. For those, for those that are new to the format, this isn't indicative of ghosting in the slightest. It's just our most powerful card. And when they don't know anything about our hand, they just name our most powerful card. This is, I like, this is a decent name too. I don't hate um, uh, Shaman of the Pack or Azuri on the second one. Solid power up here. All right, so we're hoping to draw a one drop here so we can go one drop Shaman. Yep. Does that help or hurt us? I can't tell. One drop would be great. Trigger. Go. Dis dismember ain't free. So the goal is to both not die in combat and only lose one elf. Now lands and one drops are good because the land lets me dwin in elite and shaman next turn. Yeah, they don't necessarily know we're on Dismember, though, Doogie. Whereas, like, they know we're on Azuri, and they know it's one of our better cards. Yeah, I agree, Pike. Azuri's, like, the scarier card in some places. Although, Shaman, Shaman like, also breaks board stalls, as, as exhibited here. Like, they guessed right in the first one. They didn't, get, they didn't, they didn't bat 100. They only batted 50. Is this L's best matchup? Among the, like, tier 1 decks, definitely. Or, like, tier 1.5, tier 1, whatever you want to call them. A snake, a snake, oh, it's a snake. Don't Phantasmal Image Meddling Mage on Shaman. Wow. That's aggressive. I guess I have to block a bunch here. Yeah, we're faster. We can jump block. We have cards like Shaman and Azuri. We have Collected Com Collected Company is really good against humans too because it just like generates critical mass for us. Wow, that's a bold. That's a bold play. They they definitely messed this up. If they just if they just would have. 
like put this on Phantasmal Image and name Shaman of the Pack, like, or put this on Meddling Mage and name Shaman of the Pack. It's like zero percent to win here, but yeah, their their board's just like way bigger than mine, so I think they should just lock me out of Shaman there. Yeah, yeah, they have they have disruptive elements that just don't do anything else against us too. Morning, Davids. Already, already threw three matches with the upside of elves. I'm gonna have plenty, plenty of time to hang out and BS this weekend with people. This deck. Uh, what was the loss to? We had some rough beats against uh, Band Spirits in the first match. Green. Green. Arena. So this is uh, we're beta testing Arena's new low graphics mode. People, people were complaining the animations were too fancy. So this is uh, we dialed, we hit the 1995 button and dialed it back. Uh, if you're newer, a little bit newer to the channel, David, usually for uh, the first hour, hour and a half of each stream, we do uh, a Modern or Legacy League, which are some of Magic's older formats on uh, Magic Online. And then we roll on into Arena for the remainder. Am I still going till 9.30 for my I am not. So um, I have to, because I'm going to the tournament in Iowa this weekend, Maddie and I have to are leaving about 3 o'clock to drive so we don't get in super late because we're old and we need to sleep. So... Um, I want to uh, get through five standard decks today, so I started a little bit early, so I could end a little bit early. Oh, there's there's foils in this game. They just look terrible and also crash the client 50% of the time when they get put into play. This the same human's opponent or a different one? Different human's opponent. Uh, this hand is not great, and we just drew a second copy of a card that's like not great. Do you have any advice for a beginner like me? Um, my two big pieces of advice for people who are new to paper competitive magic are one, judges are there to help you. If you ever are confused on if you should call a judge, you should definitely call a judge. The only people that are going to make you feel bad about calling a judge are cheaters and idiots, and you shouldn't feel bad about upsetting either of those two types of people. The second is that you can't over communicate. A lot of the issues that occur in paper magic are from players not being clear about where you're at in the current game state with each other. Tasty Wonton, thank you for the seven months. I appreciate that. Welcome back. As a as a concrete example of something that newer players sometimes don't realize is good to do in terms of communication, is you should verbalize all life total changes for both players. It's something that's incredibly valuable to do. Yeah, we might we might actually be in trouble this time. They just named Collected Company with that, which is one of our catch-up cards. Slewy! Thanks for 11 months. Welcome back. And hand overall is kind of medium. It's kind of funny thinking, like, if these had been dismembers, like, what would, what would my board look like? Sweet. He's super serious when he plays. I like, I like to like laugh and joke with my opponents and stuff like that. And like BS magic is a game I play for fun. Like I like, I like to do well. I'm like, I like think through my plays when I can, but like, I don't like put on a super serious face and like only do that. All the shark dread. Yep. Clan, clan caller is actually a pretty good draw here. 
It's uh, it's a card that uh, that's a card that will let me. Oh, I could have done this the other way, huh? Yeah, my sequencing here is bad. So what I should have done is I should have uh, cast this off of these and then tapped this, 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 and then played this. And then I'd have a 4-3 up as a blocker here. Yeah, my sequencing there was really sloppy. Uh, I don't really chime in on things that I don't have experience with Lay Luke, and I definitely don't have the credibility to talk about, like, what cards are good, bad, or otherwise in Legacy. Yeah, it's just, like, super bad. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm gonna concede here. I messed this game up real bad. My hand was kind of medium, and, like, when your hand is bad, you really can't play poorly. Have a good one, Danny. It's like, if I had a sequence better here, the Shaman would have been untapped. And, like, then I'd have had meaningful blockers. Like, maybe maybe I'm still in that game, but... Let me just get to the next one where I didn't play like a play like a buffoon. Brainstorm, Brainstorm Ponder Force are great. I will, I will agree with that. Uh, modern, modern this weekend... The Nerd Rage Tournament next month is is standard. Uh, I think to the surprise of few who have been around Magic the Gathering for a long time, Wizards of the Coast continues to prove that they are bad at basically everything other than designing Magic cards. As as demonstrated by recent MPL issues as well. Uh, scavenging ooze out as well. Horizon Canopy as our only land against an aggro deck feels a little bit bad, but it is what it is. I bought him the Dismember there, even though it's okay, but I would really like to draw a second land here on two. Company, company's a good draw. Uh, I mean, when I'm when I'm playing, I usually have sideboard plans set up going in. Genesis Protect, thanks for the eight month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Uh, we are currently on match four. We started early today. I just press just I just jammed the liability button real hard. That's the truth. All right, so I think they're pretty likely to. I think they're pretty likely to name like collecting company with like a meddling mage or something here if they get it next turn. So I'm gonna jam that to start. Double arc Druid. yes please. As you will, puppy. As you will. Worth noting, I don't currently have a black mana here for the shaman of the pack, but. I do. I can. I can cycle this rising canopy, leaving myself with zero lands next turn. Which is probably gonna happen. I mean, like things like things like the mythic, the mythic box thing are just like, like it's it's 2019. Can we really not like manage selling online inventory? Is that really something we're struggling with in 2019? Yeah, leaving leaving Thalion's an interesting choice. First strike matters. Not really.
Oh no, I'm gonna lose my floating mana chat. Turn four, attack. Yeah, we've played a bunch of Arden Scales in the past. In fact, David, if you haven't checked out my website before, head on over to magicesports.net. Um, you can check out, there's uh, modern and standard buttons at the top, and the modern has them broken down kind of by power level. And if you go under proven, you can find uh, my, a, a page for green black scales as my preferred deck list, as well as videos of me playing it. They're super organized around here. I swing, swing with my four fours and my five fives, as you as you will about it. I like the I like the shuffle of blockers around, shuffle of blockers around. Realize you're dead, concede. Not a problem. Thank you. Good to have you here. That was a mulligan to five, right? Just to, just to check the tape. We mulligan to five that game, right? We mulligan to five. We missed our second land drop on two. And I killed them on four. Well, effectively killed them on four. Left them in an unwinnable position on four. That's why I mentioned it, Doogie. It makes me smile, too. Makes makes me smile, too. So here's an interesting question for people who have played a bunch of modern. Um, do we think it might be meaningful... And this might be crazy, but I just want I just want opinions. Um, could it possibly be meaningful to play? This is a good draw, by the way. Um, to cut my third my fourth company in this matchup for a second lead the stampede to diversify against meddling mage. Is that is that some crazy talk, or is that like something somewhat reasonable? Because like company's the first card they always name on mage. Hey, Liberties. Thanks for the brand new tier one sub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. I mean, company is company is more powerful than lead the MP. That's definitely true. I'm only I'm on I'm on four and one right now. Yeah, that's true. Impacting the board is very important, I agree. Because like look at the difference here on lead, lead versus company, right? So, do I want to try and just ambush them inside of combat? I probably do, right? Will I be at the Kansas City Magic Fest? I will not. Con concedes to clan color, but opponent! My hand is still really good, opponent! <laughs> My hand is still really good, opponent. All right, I threw away the first game, and it didn't. It didn't matter. Four matches down, one hour in. Gosh, I love the elves deck. All right, I'm actually gonna run to the restroom really quick. When I get back, we're gonna play the last match. Then we're gonna roll on into standard. Thanks for hanging out, folks. <laughs>
Captain Not Captain Corf. Sorry, walking up as I was glancing at that. Thanks for the five months. Welcome back. Once more under the smorketing. Is this expensive deck to build? It's actually really not. So, one of the things that's really meaningful about this deck is the couple of cards in it that are, like, really expensive, you can swap out meaningfully for cards that are much less expensive. In fact, I've been playing the same list for a long time. So, if you go to my website and click Modern Decks Proving Green Black Elves, there's a link to an article on Cool Stuff Inc. where I actually break down a budget build of this deck, too. Basically, it involves turning Cavern of Souls into unclaimed territories, a Horizon Canopy into a forest, and, like, just playing something else instead of Surgical Extraction. So, like, turning turning these cards into other things is, like, pretty marginal. Oh, uh, yeah, Palace into Overgrown Tomb. Uh, I don't remember, Chucky. Yeah, I forgot Palace Sigmas too. It definitely you could replace you replace a lot of these different things with other stuff. No, Legacy Elves is really bad. The uh Legacy decks that I play that I'm generally playing these days need to fall into one of two categories, which is Brainstorm Ponder Force of Will decks or Ancient Tomb Chalice of the Void decks. Uh Collected Company is not negotiable. So this is this is one of the cards that costs a little bit of money that's not negotiable. So all of the expensive lands have very reasonable budget replacements. Surgical extraction can be anything else. Um, this this card is the expensive card that makes the deck function. You have to have this one. You could theoretically just play four main deck lead the Stampedes, but when I said you could budget the mana base and not impact the power level much, I believe that. If you budget collected companies, the power level of your deck is going to go down significantly. That is that is a budget chain that is going to a budget change that would severely impact your results of the deck. Alright, so if I hit a land next turn, I get to go Druid. Land War Elves, Druid Scoos. Hey, me. Thanks for the five month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Red Green Lands. Eh, probably not. Maybe. I guess that's a combo deck. Uh, I ask that people don't put me on the spot if they want to know if I'll play something. So, as always, regardless of what format you're asking about, I'd encourage you to submit any decks you're interested in having me play through the form on my website. Also, keep in mind, because legacy content is not nearly as popular as even modern content, the minimum price to add a legacy deck to the deck queue is $50. I kind of offset the minimum pricing with uh, based on how popular the format tends to be. All right, looks like we're playing against Blue-Red Phoenix, which is actually a matchup I haven't played a ton with this deck. The last time, the last time I was playing this deck a ton in Modern, the Phoenix deck hadn't, uh, Phoenix hadn't been printed yet. Having, having Scavenging Ooze in our opener in this matchup should be pretty good for us, though. No, the, the form, the form is basically the asking, essentially, is a good way to think about it. Although they might just put... Phoenix is into play here on turn two, so. Then Scavenging Ooze is like, yeah, not not so useful, Scavenging Ooze. They put a mountain foil mountain into play and it didn't crash. Praise, praise be. Yeah, yeah, outside of Thing in the Ice, we're usually pretty good in this matchup. And because they already flipped a bird into play here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and company here rather than get the Scoos down. I'm like, maybe I hit Dwinnin's Elite plus an Elf. That lets me play the Scoos anyways. Uh, 
So I don't have any lords here, but it is what it is. Land was fine. Even even without the land, we were gonna play the company this turn, right? Were we? Maybe not. I don't remember. You're right. We didn't. We weren't gonna. We weren't without the land. Now, worth noting, Skuze is dead to a bolt here. But uh, if they don't have, uh, even if they have a bolt, like we just have a lot of dorks in play here. And again, at this point, we're at the point where like any collected company, lead the stampede. Elvish Arc Druid, um, Shaman of the Pack, like all of these. We have a ton of Azuri. We have a lot of high impact cards in our deck right now. And even if we just like draw blanks for a little bit, we're just wide here. We're going to get to attack them a couple of times. Sahili, cute. So if I attack them with everything and they block here, they take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Is it worth, is it worth trading my scavenging use to do that? They block here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 13. Or do I, do I like try and kill the Sahili? I could also like, just like, I could like not attack with this and I could, I could like throw these two at their planeswalker and like throw these at them and I can leave this up so that way if they block this to save the planeswalker, I get to eat this with skews. I think I kind of like these attacks. So like, I'm like making them pick between their planeswalker or their bird. And if they give the, if they, if they choose to save the planeswalker, the scavenging ooze is then no longer lightning boltable. And like, they're still taking six here. Yeah, I agree. I think, I, well, I, I don't know that I have to kill a planeswalker. I kind of don't mind making them pick between the planeswalker and the, the planeswalker and the, the, the bird here. I guess that's probably silly. <laughs> yeah, let's just kill the planeswalker. And I'm gonna leave this back with an activation. Nah, they're not gonna block. Yeah, they might block. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that back with an activation. I was not, was not expecting that outcome. I wonder, I wonder if they have another lightning axe here. Should we try to eat the creature collecting company and see if it grows the skews? Asking the real questions. Four four sure. All right, time to attack with everything but Arc Druid. There's a Heritage Druid in my bin, so if they have Gut Shot. They could trade their Drake for my Scoos, but I think that's fine because they're taking a lot of damage on the rest of this. Finale of Devastation doesn't solve any problems that this archetype has. I can't, I can't think of any meaningful reasons to play it. 
Every every card I put in my deck that doesn't get hit by Collected Company or Lead the Stampede has to have a really powerful and important purpose. This isn't, this isn't a Silver Bullets deck. It's a Beat You Down and Kill You deck. The reason why we play cards like Collected Company is because they, they provide redundancy. I don't, I don't even know that I call it a win more. I think I just call it bad. It's just like slow and expensive. Oh, this is, uh, I should, uh, I should have eaten this on my turn because, uh, they have lightning axe. I want to get the, I should get this to a six, six while they're tapped out. This feels pretty good. Like I said, I think games where they don't, where they don't thing in the ISS, we're probably pretty ahead in this matchup. And post board, I get to bring in some dismembers to prevent that from happening a lot of the time. Scavenging is also good here. I don't think this is a surgical extraction matchup. Because, like, I already want to bring in dismember. Oh, Arcdruid gives infinite mana. Durf, you're right. So, I definitely want Skews and dismember. Lead the Stampede is an okay trim. Um, our team probably gets picked apart enough that Azuri is likely not good. That's pretty clean. Just like Azuri lead out. It pulls our curve down a little bit too. This is technically a one mana spell. It's always a surgical matchup, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe on the draw, especially it's a surgical matchup just because like fast mul multiple birds quickly is like something that can be that can give us a hard time the fact the fact that they have sahili kind of changes the dynamic a little bit because like normally normally so like yeah normally i'd go to cutting clan caller but i think because they have sahili as a way to make one ones in their deck now that my lord effects are a little bit more important so i don't think i want to cut any of those i think i want to keep all of these and all of these Thing in the Ice is what makes the opponent's deck good against creature decks like mine. I think Sphere is overboarding. I think if I want anything else, it's these. I'm not even sure that I want those. No, I'm going to click Submit like this. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Azuri is just like really expensive. You joke, but a lot of people do main deck surgical in the in the uh, Phoenix deck that the opponent's playing. Just modern's a pretty degenerate inbred format. Um, does eighty does eighty flood Gengar? Is it is it a flooding issue? Is it supposed to keep raining tonight? We're not leaving till this evening. I did not review submissions last night. I'm probably not going to be reviewing submissions until Sunday. Get my mulligan this. It's okay. If this lives, we get to do this and this and this. Looking for bombs. Looking for bombs. So, generally speaking, I often review submissions every evening, but we're currently in that beginning of the format cycle still, and I'm just falling behind because I've been live so much, and then I was sick, so I plan to play catch-up on Sunday. Yeah, this is the deck I'm playing tomorrow. That's why we're playing it for a second time this week. Good, good, clean, and easy to understand. Well, that was the best draw in my deck. So if this if this lives, I get to do this into this next turn. Uh, there is a one mana sorcery in standard 
that says you can play an extra land this turn, target creature you control explores. And there's Growth Spiral too. Yep. The enemy. The enemy of my people. Well, good chance this thing flips over next turn because Mana Morpho is a messed up card. Even, even if it doesn't flip over next turn, my hand's like not, not set up to kill it. So it's like, eh. And we're not set up to kill them on, on three. Yeah, I agree, Vernash. It's not very good. Joyous Potato. Thank you for the 16 month reset. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. I mean, it, it honestly depends on what their follow-up is, I rate ya. Because, like, if they don't actually have, like, removal and stuff, if I draw, they, like, hit me for seven, but if I draw a land next turn, I actually just get to, like, play my same board out again. There's not Rexbox. Just feel free to send it through. Now, if they also have Phoenixes here, we're dead. But if they don't have phoenixes and we draw a land, all right, they hit a phoenix. We're dead. Yay, modern! Yay! Thanks, Rex. Welcome back. Part of me wonders is like, Maybe am I supposed to have Damping Sphere in this matchup instead of Skews? Because, like, Damping Sphere makes Arc Lake, Arc Arc Lake Phoenix harder for them to get back. And it slows down Thing in the Ice flipping over, which is interesting. Like I said, I haven't... I haven't, uh... I haven't played this matchup enough to 100% know for certain, like, what all the moving parts are. Doesn't seem unwinnable by any means, but I definitely don't know the details of, like what's ideal out of the sideboard here. Pretty easy mulligan here. Just a lot of lands. No dismember. No payoffs. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. Would love to scry like an archer to the top. Coincidence. You're playing my first submission. And you're driving through my hometown on the same day. I live in Davenport, IA. Good luck this weekend. I'd come, but the wife would make me bring the kids. The, uh... The Horizon Canopy is a little awkward, but I think it's important. Horizon Canopy, like, sucks as your first land in the matchups that are kind of aggressive, but it's very valuable in other places, so. One also went to six. They scribed top. Scale of one to dead, where's this Heritage Druid at? Maybe I should have kept that elf on top because if they kill the Heritage Druid, I really don't want to play this one until lead on to. Man, that's unfortunate. We would have hit we would have hit the nuts here. I think I'm just passing. I really don't want to play this elite out for just a 2-2. Uh, I bought him then Elves of Deep Shadow, which I think I actually should have kept because of the potential of Lightning Bolt. You often shave Shaman and remove loving matchups. I think that's incredibly incorrect. Um, I think not only is Shaman fine, it's just a... Because Shaman's fine, is just a 3-2, deal one. Shaman. Shaman's just like... As far as like, if you look at all of your cards in the elf deck and you look at the individual card quality of them, you're like, Shaman is just like better than a lot of your other cards. 
I would. I would prefer to trim something like Elvish Clan Caller in removal heavy matchups long before I trim Shaman of the Pack. In fact, Shaman's kind of one of the sacred cows. I don't think I ever cut it. Yeah, cards cards like Azuri and Elvish Clan Caller, these are cards that do much less than Shaman does when I don't have other cards in play. Hey, Ponch. Details on the Discord there at the link. Welcome, welcome. You're basically racing, and they could be a bit faster than you. Flipping thing is really bad. Yeah, I think I think there's a chance that 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 uh, wet ball is better than sphere. I agree, or wet ball is better than skews. I agree. I'm not sure if they have like spell piercing to spell in against me. So I'm like doing this on their upkeep. They definitely don't have two mana counter spells in against me, so. I guess, I guess doing this on their upkeep give, puts me in danger of them, like, playing a bunch of Manamorphos and flipping it in response. So maybe that's loose. I also, like, could have attacked them. Chill Shades Racer, thanks for the biddies. Say I'm down to 14 here, and I'm taking more damage off this land. So, like, if they've been, if they've been another Phoenix here, I'm probably losing the race. Uh, take a break, change decks, change formats. Change change decks, change formats is usually usually one of the best pieces of advice. Morning, Brad. Don't looting and ditch more birds. Don't looting and ditch more birds. They're through 19 cards. How many birds do they have in 19 cards? Probably three. Just two. I think two's probably enough. Means we're dead to a bolt next turn. Oh, never not above average. And a gut shot. Sure, why not? Alright, if they have stone cold nothing, collected companies and the shamans could get us there. That's always that's always the out, right? Collected companies and the shamans. Hey, hey, what's going on, Phil? Have a safe trip. Of course, Thunderwunk. Also dead to gut shot because of my horizon canopy. Dead to Snapcaster Mage. Dead to third Arc Lake Phoenix cast with haste. Thing in the ice blocking even just like pretty good for them here. Playing the thing first is interesting. I almost feel like they'd want to like try and like be able to hit a Phoenix plus other spells like put a third Phoenix into play here. Am I dead? You have one card left. It's always lethal. Always lethal. I like the conservative attack here. Want to hit like Dwinin's Elite, so that way we can hit like Double Shaman. Elves of Deep Shadow, sure. So if we hit Shaman plus a Heritage Druid, if we hit Shaman plus a Heritage Druid, we could uh, spin the wheel again. I'm 
That's so unfortunate. We're so close. So close and so far away. <sighs> if the Cocos had been better. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Figured you're the MTG content creator I watched the most, so I might as well resub. That and the decks I want are too expensive in Paper Scott Hot Infinite Shadow. Paper Magic is very expensive. All right, so some bad beats died us against uh, Phoenix. A couple of mistakes lost us to Bant Spirit. Still went three and two. Deck's great. Probably not going to change anything for tomorrow. I don't know. I might. I'm not sure if I want to play the third and fourth copies of these cards or two revokers. It's like pretty marginal either way. We're going to attack a bunch with green things. We're either going to win or we're going to lose. <sighs> 